Malcolm Beach, Brian Brown and Rachel Wood. Good morning to you both. Welcome Good to morning. Kings. Morning, mate. I uh, loved your jokes before. I'm pretending that didn't happen. I'll be <laughs> thinking the boss will be saying that. Rachel Ward, we need to have a bit of a chat to her about mm. inappropriate jokes. <laughs> bottoms. <laughs> bottoms. Why not? Bottoms up. I really enjoyed the film. Um, fun, quirky. Uh, there was, I guess, something that I really enjoyed about it being real and believable. Except for, for when Frank maybe got a bit angry and started bashing down chimneys. But I think the overall story of Palm Beach was just so real and believable. And I guess a really interesting story about what we all face as we get older, uh, trying to find a semblance of maturity, because I guess un underneath it all, we all are pretty immature. And we pretend to be adults, but I know Brian's a bit of a kid, and I think you're a bit of a kid too, Rachel, aren't you? No, I'm very grown up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's start in wales and i'm happy to talk to you both about this because i think this is this is where things started to come together it was the seed of thought for this film palm beach it was go on oh yeah <laughs> it was it was a christmas like five year, five years ago that rachel and i went to uh, ha have christmas with three other couples great friends of rachel's for many years and friends of mine for the since we've been married and it was a great time, you know, like those Christmases are. You talk about family, friends, you talk about things that have happened at work or not happened and your kids and all that. Came away from it having had a good time, but we started to talk about the fact that most of the men there, and myself included, were actually struggling. Uh, I'd been struggling with anxiety. I didn't know I had it. I knew something was wrong with me during that year and I'd gone to see, um, I said to my GP, I've got to talk, I want to talk to a psychologist. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> And, uh, and I was coming through that. I was still a little fragile, but I was coming through it. But another mate, a fabulous bloke, had done well in business. He'd been a trader all his life and he'd sold his business and he was bumping into walls now. Mm. Another bloke had been mm. retrenched and had lost his sense of identity. <clears throat> now, all these were blokes that were t successful in their own way and very capable. But right at the moment, they didn't know how to go forward. And yet this was all bubbling along underneath what was still having a good time. A holiday, a great time. A holiday. Mm. So that's where we sat and talked and went, you know, I think if this is happening to us, this is universal. Mm. Let's see if we can't tell a story about about this world. And what did you observe, <clears throat> Rachel? Well, not as much, really. I just thought they were being as bonkers as always. <laughs> and um, the girls weren't really going through um um, any kind of midlife crisis or mm. existential crisis, but they were certainly having to deal with the fellas who were. Um, and I and I guess that was sort of what was interesting to me too about the comment of the film is that maybe women just don't have those kind of expectations of identity and status through work, or they didn't for the baby boomers anyway. Mm. Um, and so they weren't sort of feeling quite the... Um, the anticlimax or the fact that they hadn't quite reached their expectations. Oh, maybe, or, or, yeah, I'm sure there are women out there who, who, who have those similar feelings, but I think we have existential crises about other things. Sure. It's not so ego-driven, maybe? Um, yeah, well, maybe it's, yeah, I think it's just, it's always identity. And I don't necessarily think it was the blokes, it was ego, it's just a shift of identity. Okay. It's like, what yeah. purpose? purpose? What am I getting, what mm. am I getting mm -hmm. up for? What am I, um, who am I? Uh, who am I if I'm not <clears throat> going to do my job in the bank or, or, or yep, whatever? Sure. You know, what does that make me? And that was one of the challenges for your character, Frank, in the movie as well, Brian. He'd, uh, he'd come through, I guess, a very successful career and uh, a really Aussie career too with the shirts and all those type of things. But tell me a little bit more about the Pacific sideburns. I guess they're the central thread of this film. So let's kind of set the scene as to exactly who are the Pacific sideburns and how they fit in. Well, the, we have to have a reason for these boys coming together for this birthday how did mm. they each know it how did they know each other and so we decided that we'd said it that years ago when they were you know at uni or after school they had a little band and they had and they happened to have a big hit called fearless and that 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 sort of bonded them they then went their separate ways they didn't stay a band or anything else. that was their moment um and the name of the band was pacific sideburns i was the manager of the band uh, which which starts to grow its own complications as the years go on um and and so the pacific sideburns great name for a band 
Great name for a band. <laughs> don't know why we don't have one. Of course not. Um, uh, <laughs> but that, that, that's the scenario that brings them together. They knew each other through music. Then. And, of course, they love music, which mm. allows us mm. to have music as a, uh, great music throughout the movie. Now, I'd probably say more like a crowded house is probably out for Palm Beach because there was a lot of people there. And it's a beautiful, a beautiful property. Uh, cinema photography, it was just, just beautiful to see the movie. But I want to talk a little bit more about the cast because it's really good to see some really quality, skilled Australian actors all playing generally very, very strong characters, which is, is hard for you to, I guess, pull together as a director as well, Rachel? Well, it's an ensemble piece. So that's, uh, you've always got, you've got 11 um, lead roles on set at one time, mm. and but more so when you're writing the script because you're because as Joanna R- Murray Smith and I were um, um, did together because you have to interweave all of these stories and they all have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So that's quite a complicated thing when you've got sort of six storylines that all have to um, sort of converge and then and then sew deliver. up yeah and then deliver mm. um but on set it was yeah they were just a rowdy bunch i just occasionally had to put on my school mistress <laughs> <hat> <laughs> and read the riot act and um but other than that it was a lot of fun and um you know every but the film is full of bonhomie so everybody yeah. you know so you had to keep that sort of sense of bonhomie on set a bit so that everybody could just sort of slip then into their roles and keep going we've all known each other for, for a long time many of us you know we've known each other haven't mixed together Matt. i mean sam neil's been a great mate of mine sure. for 40 years and, and mm. rachel um and rachel knew richard e grant uh, 25 years ago they did a movie together and they've stayed in touch and seen each other Greta, uh, Rachel and, and I both knew back when she was a young actress. Um, Jackie McKenzie, we've worked with. Heather Mitchell is, is a fantastic... I've worked with Heather, yeah. In, in mm. Rachel's work. So we've known all these people in varying degrees. And um, you know Matilda? And we do know Matilda. <laughs> you know, she's our daughter, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, and always enjoy working with Till. Um, but so, so it, the spirit on the set was one of relaxation, Mm. of feeling good. And and so when you you go into these scenes, which a lot of them are very up and people enjoying life at that time, uh, that's not that allows you to come into the scenes with carrying something rather good, you know, Mm, a relaxed, happy feeling. And you were talking about the bonhomie. One of the things that I really liked was the focus on the food. The food looked just amazing. Some delicious scenes. I mean, Palm Beach really is a beautiful spot. We live in a pretty beautiful part of the world. There's something really special about Palm Beach. What I kind of noted last night was that it seemed like it had a bit of a, a French summer film connection as well. Well, we definitely set out to make an aspirational film, mm. which is quite rare in Australia. We don't really make aspirational films in the in the sort of mould of Bridget Jones' Diary or Love Actually, you know, the working title films, or um, or even like the Nancy Myers films, Something's Got to Give, and um, those films with Jack Nicholson being crazy. Um, so we set out to make a film, a middle class film which we don't do here. We don't like to admit somehow that we're middle class. Sure, we're mostly sure. middle class here. Mm. We like to still think that we're outlaws and <laughs> renegades and underbellies convicts. and all of the convicts, <laughs> exactly. But surprise, surprise, we're actually, you know, most of us middle class, most of us enjoying a fair, a fairly good lifestyle in, in, you know, when you compare it to the rest of the world. Um, and so, you know, we wanted to make something that was, that, and also the people that, do go to the films, still are going to the movies, are the sort of 50 pluses. Sure. So we wanted to make a film for them and to, so that they could see themselves up there and whatever they... And, you know, we're baby boomers. We've always mm. demanded a lot of attention yep. and we like to make a lot of noise and we are not going to go quietly into the great good night. So we want to talk about what's going on with us and that's partly yep. what is going on with us. Because, I mean, the younger generations, and even though, as you said, it's probably possibly cast a little bit more towards that older generation, the younger generation are going to learn a lot from this because it's really what they're going to be facing in the not-too-distant future as well yeah Yeah. and also we represent there's a lot of young ones in the film who are are also you know we're we're covering their stories as well Mm. dealing with commitment what does it mean to commit to someone you know what what does marriage mean and i guess like with exotic marigold hotel which was one of the things that made us go there's definitely an audience when we looked around at exotic marigold hotel for a story of of this sort um 
I, I spoke to a number of young people about it saying, well, you would know of this movie. They said, oh, yeah, we know of it. We liked sure. it. And I said, yeah. what you like? They yeah. said, I liked it. I got to understand my parents through it. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I might have to get my son to watch that I also that think one, it's yeah. very hopeful in the sense that, you know, the last 40 years we've come so far with medical um, mm, sure. help and we're living so much longer that we actually do have a whole other chapter that we've barely sort of looked at. We've barely examined, really, uh, the sort of age from sort of 60 to... I mean, we've, we've got a huge chunk. I mean, mm, most sure. people are living till they're 80 and they're not just... Jeez, you I know, haven't got much time. Not, <laughs> <laughs> they're That's not true. putting their feet up, you know. <laughs> they're right there doing things. And sometimes those obstacles. I think you, I think it was actually a line that you had in the film, Brian, talking about obstacles and and kids that have obstacles become so much stronger. And obstacles like cancer in our life actually do make us stronger despite the challenges. Those old those old sayings, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. I mean, they're true. And I and you know, the fact that I had anxiety, I have to say. Having had that and having to deal with it has made me a better bloke. I am more understanding of people when they say that, that so and so is depressed. I would have said years ago, "Well, tell them to pull their finger out and get on Tough with it." Enough. Well, you can't pull your finger out. This, these things are so difficult to deal with. You're so mm. confused. It's so painful, and that—that's you know, I've become far more understanding because of what I went through. And I think when you struggle you learn about yourself you learn and you gain resistance and you learn that you can get through things um uh, and, and 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 so um and so i have no idea where i started and where i'm well i would say, I'll, I'll give a i mean just but because well because this film does deal with mental uh, mental issues um hmm. and depression and anxiety and all those things and you know l lost identity I've just been reading a book which has just knocked me out. It's called Lost Connections by Johan Hari, uh, J-O-H-A-N-E-H, Hari, H-A-R-I. I would really recommend it for the, anybody who's interested in, mm. in mental health and uh, what... And he just has a completely different way of, of looking at it. He's sort of reinventing the wheel, and it's pretty fantastic. I've noted that one down. I think that might be a Christmas present. Look, I, I, yeah. I, I do think that we're moving into a time where we've got to examine this period of the next 20 years. Sure. You know, this word retirement that came up, which was just accepted as a time, oh, that ends, and now you drift off into some lovely sunset and have a lovely time and go fishing. Well, 10 minutes, if you've never fished, after 10 minutes, you're bored out of your skull. <laughs> However, <laughs> you know, it is a new sociological, big discussions going on. When we started to make this movie, and part of it is about a bloke having depression or whatever, I would never have thought that the subject matter would be as topical. Mm. I turn over the newspaper and I see a massive article about anxiety in, with, with men. Um, and, and, and so we are in conversation now. And also, I guess, once you get to that point of a change in life and, you know, you, you, everything changes for you, that seismic shift, it can be a real challenge. We've got to wrap up. Uh, it's been it's been great to talk to you. But look, uh, before we go, I just want to talk a little bit more about Frank, uh, the, the, the character that you play. And you touched on your, your personal relationship with uh, Sam Neill. Sam Neill's evidently got a very proud alpha male rooster called Brian Brown. He does, yes. He has... Sam has a farm uh, where he makes his wine, two paddocks wine, um, and he has uh, and he, he has the animals on the farm. Uh, he gives them the, gives them a name. He had a ram once, and he called that Brian Brown too. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> uh, and he said he died on the job. But, um, <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, he's got a rooster now, and I'm not so sure. I'm not sure whether I like that or not, because he says he's vain, pumped up, full of himself. Um, <laughs> Alpha male. But I sort yep. of like the look of the rooster. I got to say, <laughs> very black and white. Yeah, very much so. We've all got a rooster called Brian. We've had one too. <laughs> and that scene where you guys actually have a bit of biffo. I, mm. I bet you got a bit of satisfaction, personally and professionally, from squeezing Sam Neill's face the way he did. <laughs> I got a lot of satisfaction of being the one that gets the first punch. You certainly did. It was a good one too. <laughs> <laughs> and look, if I can quickly ask you this as well, Rachel, uh, I can't help but thinking sometimes after spending some time with Brian in the last 24 hours, to a degree he was maybe typecast into the film? 
Not really. Not really. Okay. No, uh, not really. I mean, Brian is not someone who. I mean, Brian is pulls himself up by the bootstraps a bit, yeah. um, which is which is good. Because he cops it in the film. He cops it from his yeah, mates. Yeah, and there's times when Frank just. Um, I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there was, there's times when Sa- when Brian, even at his worst, was. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> Brian at his worst. Want to kill him? Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, there's lots of, there are lots of shades of, of Brian, but no, it's a character for sure. It's been great to talk to you guys and had a really enjoyable time last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the producer and the director of Palm Beach, Brian Brown and Rachel Ward, uh, have a fantastic day and thanks for your time. Love Cheers. Thanks, Murray. Thanks, Murray. Thanks, Murray.